Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it's Thursday, so that means we're on YouTube. And um, I thought I'd change things up a little bit. We haven't done uh, any traditional stuff in quite a while. I think the last time Dustin reminded me, we did some traditional drawing with Omega the Opossum. And uh, but today I thought I'd sit over on my animation desk, and I'm constantly um, I'm getting I get a lot of questions about this stuff. These these drawings that I do with my brush pen. This is one that I did yesterday. Uh, coyote, here's one I did on the airplane. Um, so I thought I'd do some live drawing today doing this. So I thought that could be kind of fun. Uh, so um, let's just do our usual. We're going to, um, I'm just going to draw. Uh, oh, the other thing too, I'm going to show, I'm going to be drawing with, with from reference today. So I've, I've got a whole bunch of um, photos that I shot while I was out in Montana recently. I'm gonna pull this off ever so gently, and um, I got this photo that I fo shot of a uh, mountain lion, a puma, so to speak. And here's the skull right here. Here's a mountain lion skull. Um, and so I thought I'd do the drawing of that today. And I'm getting all tangled up in wires. Uh, so I thought I would do that, and we'll just do our usual. We'll do questions and. I'll draw, I'll talk about what I'm thinking about as I'm doing this, how I'm doing it, all that kind of stuff. And we'll dive in. And as usual, I've got my trusty sidekick, Dustin Blaze, my son. Hi, everybody. And we're just going to draw, and you guys can ask questions. So, without further ado, how are we looking there, Dustin? Is that good? It looks Oh, by the way, this is my, this is my animation desk, so... The, the desk you're looking at right now, this very desk, I animated The Lion King on it. I animated Aladdin on this. I animated Mulan and Pocahontas and Brother Bear. This that, desk has got a lot of history. It does. And that yeah. backlight still still works for that and everything? Oh, yeah. The backlight still works. So I got the... There's my little backlight in there. I got my animation disc. Is that LED? Or is what what kind it's, of what kind of light is? Oh, it's is just it? a fluorescent, fluorescent, fluorescent bulb. It must get pretty warm under that. No, it doesn't. It doesn't generate any heat actually. Oh, it's really? Fluorescent, yeah. So no, no problem. Oh, it was the it was the above lamp. Yes, set. exactly. This lamp right here. Oh, gotcha. So anyway, let's. I'm just gonna go ahead and dive in. So the first thing is this tool right here. Um, this is I I love to draw you know big, and so this is just a, a you know a, a, a pen a you know graphite. It's a piece of graphite inside. This, this is just a general holder. You can, oh, here it is. Here. This is just a general holder that you can just pretty much put anything in. And, and today, I've got a piece of graphite in there. I like using big, fat sticks of graphite, uh, especially when I'm doing big drawing. But even when I'm doing small drawing like this, um, because it keeps me from drawing really tight. I don't want to go draw tight today. Where can you get one of those? You can get these. This one, I think I, I found. It was in an art store. I think it was in Seattle. I picked it up. Uh, not Seattle, sorry. In uh, San Diego. San Diego. San Diego. <laughs> no, we're going to leave that line right there. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I wasn't going to go any further. Than that, but. <laughs> Maybe can us find that in any... Uh, any art store? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, not well, any art store. Most. Yeah, but a lot of art stores you can find it. Right. So here I'm just... What I, I'm not... I don't want to get too detailed with, with the drawing at this point. I'm not really concerned with that. What I want is to get just the general proportions. I want to make sure all my proportions are right. Do you have any tips for any beginning artists? Tips for beginning artists, you know, it's a cop-out answer, but the, the, the only tip I can give you is just do a lot of art. You know, the only way you get better at art, just like anything else, if you want to be a good football player or a soccer player, you got to play a lot of soccer or football, and it's the same with art. So, you know, the, the best way to get better at it is to do a lot of it. Practice, so, make, practice makes better. Yep, yep, exactly. And so, do a lot of it. Do lots and lots of art. So here I'm just, you know, want to make sure I got the proportions right. I'm looking at, as I'm looking at my reference, I'm looking at general proportion. <clears throat> looking at where things come down and 
connect. And what kind of material is that? Is that paper? This is gray Strathmore paper. Gray Strathmore, and this this you really can pick up at most uh, art stores. I think this one, this particular pad, I picked up at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or something. But um, you can order it online uh, through Amazon, really cheap. Would you say that's your favorite kind of? Uh this paper. is my favorite sketch paper right now. When, when I'm doing out, when I go out and do my sketches, um, this is what I use most. I've kind of switched over to gray paper in the last two years or so. Um, I just love being able to use the white pen and pull out highlights and that sort of thing. Because it's kind of like your Photoshop and how you constantly use a gray gray background exactly. so you can do that. That's really good, Dustin. That's exactly right. I really like starting with gray, and um, uh, it's it's a mid-tone, right? So yeah. um, I'm not starting too bright, not starting too dark, and it gives me the ability to go lighter and darker. Can you see that at all? Yeah. You can kind of see it. Yeah, you can you can see it. So I've got so I've got a pretty rough sketch laid in, just enough. This month I'm asking all the artists that I follow, what do you do with your old sketchbooks? Oh, I just, I just pile them up. I've got piles of them. Literally, piles of them. So you, so you have old sketchbooks from when you were younger? Yeah. Well, not too young because my, uh, but from, you know, years ago, um, my sketchbooks from when I was young, I don't have any more because my house burnt down when I was 17. So I lost all those in a forest fire. What kind of paper would you say is better, middle tone gray or brown? It depends on what you want, whatever you want to use. So, I mean, I, I like the mid tone gray, and I like it to be neutral, not too warm, not too cool. So, nice neutral gray. This is a little tiny bit warm. So, the next thing I'm using are these brush pens. These here are felt tip. I usually use a synthetic brush, but I've run out of them. But this this will work just as well. So you can see here, that's the little brush pen that I use, and I, and they are made by. Here's one that's not open yet. It's an Asian company, Bimoji. Bimoji. So these I I order these like twenty at a time. I go on Amazon, and order boxes of these. Because you can't really find them in that many yeah, places. Yeah, these I can't find in any stores here in the States. So I order these online, and uh, I really like them. And that's really, I mean, the especially with the thin synthetic brush ones. Let me show you. Let me show you something. <laughs> Let me show you something. This is, this is, I was just goofing around, but I want you to see the detail I was able to get with the brush. You can see it's really, really fine, and uh, and you can really have some fun with it. So, I really recommend using these brushes. Yeah, you can get some like some really thin, thin strokes. That's a lot of yeah good detail in there. And I'm guessing that it um, they have both black and white um, variants of that. Is that and that's how you do the the whites? Yes. So the the white pen is this. This is a white jelly roll pen. And I've got several different ways of doing white. I can use the jelly roll pen. I've got a paint marker that I use sometimes. And then I've also got white gouache, which is an opaque watercolor. Um, this is another one, this Pip Faber-Castell. Um, this is a much thicker tip, you can see, um, to do big areas of white. And I'll sometimes use that. So that way you're not constantly just like scribbling along with the yeah. thin, ultra thin. Exactly. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive in here. And one of the things you'll notice, I'm not going to, I'm not going to draw along the top in, in, uh, with the brush pen. I'm only going to draw where the line is dark. And then when areas where the line is light, that's where I'm going to go ahead and use my white pen. Do you think it is uh, possible to make a good story uh, for a short film or feature film without following the three-act structure? Well, uh, sure, anything's possible. Um, you know, three-act structure, 
the reason why 99% of all films are done in three ox structure is because it works. And so, you know, there are films that aren't necessarily three act, you know, they tend to be big epic films, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark, I think is four, four or five acts. And what, um, what would you mean by, uh, by acts, like beginning, middle, and end? Or? Yeah, well, usually in a three-act structure, you've got your, the first act is your introduction, and then your launch into the film. It's, it's the inciting incident, right? It's the thing that happens to the protagonist that launches them into the rest of the film. So, with Star Wars, it's the loss of uh, the farm, the parents, you know, the, the uncle and the aunt that get killed by the stormtroopers, right? There's nothing left for him there anymore, so he gets, he launches into the into the rest of the film. And it's also, you know, he's meet, he meets Ben Kenobi and, you know, all of that adds up to him being launched into the rest of the film. So, and then your your second act is the meat. That's the fun and games. It's where the, the bad guy closes in. It's all the stuff, you know, as the plot gets thicker. It's all the things that happen there. And then, uh, and then your third act is your climax of the film and the conclusion. What kind of painting would you like to see in art competition? What kind of painting would I like to see in art competition? That's a broad question. I'm not sure I understand the question. I mean, I like all kinds of painting. Are you ambidextrous? I am not ambidextrous. Well, it depends on what, how you can, how do you define it. I don't draw ambidextrously, but um, with eating and drawing, I'm left-handed. With everything else, I'm right-handed. What's the best angle for your drawing table for comfort? For me, the angle I'm drawing at right now, so it's about thirty degrees. But I can draw. I mean, I can I can draw pretty much straight up and down too. It doesn't. It's not a big deal. Uh, what stood up the most in uh, in portfolios whenever you reviewed them? Um, really good animal drawing is rare. Finding people that could really draw animals well was really rare. So when we found people that could do that, it really stood out stood out to me. I remember looking at Ronnie Williford's portfolio for the first time. Ronnie and I are good friends, and I remember his. I was on the review board, and I remember when his portfolio came through. And it was full of these beautiful animal drawings. Um, I was blown away because we weren't used to seeing good animal drawing. Really good figure drawing we saw a lot of, you know. Uh, but animal drawing we didn't see a lot of. Um, so it was it was interesting to it was interesting to see that. Real quick, I want to mention um, just to put a plug out there. Sorry, but I'm going to do it. Um, we uh, I'm going to jump over to my. My other pens too. I've got some, I've got some uh, Copic markers that I use as well. But um, we are doing a pre-sale on a brand new uh, storyboarding course done by my friend Lyndon Ruddy, and um, we're doing that pre-sale on my website creatureartteacher.com. And I just want to let you guys know that today is the last day for the pre-sale. So get in there, and uh, you'll save a whole bunch of you'll save a whole bunch if you get it today off of the off the price later on. Hurry while supplies last. Yeah. So <laughs> go over to creatureartteacher.com, my website, and there you will find the pre-sale for Lyndon Ruddy's storyboard course. If you're interested in storyboarding, this is a great course. It's taken us six months to get this thing put together uh it's full absolutely full i think it's 14 hours worth of material so uh check it out i just wanted to, i wanted to darken that nose just to get a sense of the values i'm going to jump back up now i'm currently trying to decide whether to go for an ipad pro or wacom mobile studio pro basically a portable cintiq i know you have experience with both so which one would you recommend you know what? It's that's a tough one. I mean, I, I love Cintiq. I would probably go with the Cintiq, only because um, 
I think it, it's a little bit, I think, I'm not sure, don't, don't quote me on it, but I think when you get outside of the studio, let's say you're outdoors, I think it's a brighter screen, but I could be wrong, I'm not sure. I know when I had, when I take my, uh, my iPad out, I really have problems uh, getting the screen, uh, the screen bright enough. Yeah, the Cintiq screen has a more of a matte sheen to it, so it doesn't reflect light as much as a as an iPad does. And yeah, uh, that's, also that's the, another issue. Yeah. Also, I feel the um, the Wacom Pen, like you're able to get a lot more um, pressure out of the pen than a, than an iPad. Uh, pressure sensitivity. Yeah, pressure sensitivity feels much more pressure sensitive than uh, uh, than the iPad. Pro's pen, and so you get a lot more, a more realistic feel for for drawing on a on a portable Cintiq. Gotcha. Well, there you go. Are there any new brushes coming out? Uh, we uh, we have some in the bank actually that we've been sitting on. So yeah, we'll probably get some out to you pretty soon. So here I'm just, one of the things I look at when I'm drawing like this is I look at the value structure of my reference <clears throat> and I want to make sure that I'm not going too dark in places that should be light, right? And so I'm just, and I want to get texture, I want to get texture in the fur, but I don't want to do it at the expense of making the drawing busy. So here I'm just really trying to be careful. And I'm trying to go really light on the pressure on the pen because I want really fine hairs in here. In the future, can you please make a uh, tutorial for drawing cartoon characters? Well, I do have on my website, I've got a course on character design, and they're all cartoon characters. If you go to creatureartteacher.com, there's an entire course in there. And so I've just arrived. Uh, are you currently using uh, a reference? Yes, I am currently using reference. Do you normally use reference for all, for all your drawings, or no. uh, major just majority of the time? No, not even a majority. I would say half the time, maybe. Today I'm using reference just because I I want to just dive right into the drawing and not really figure out anatomy. And I mean, I'm, I'm having to figure out anatomy, but. Do you think an older, middle, middle-aged middle person can learn art well enough to become an artist? Yes. Absolutely. And if this is an older, middle-aged person asking me, you know, absolutely. Any, all it takes is, like anything else, you can, it just takes practice. It just takes practice. What is the biggest misconception you see in young artists these days? The biggest misconception, the biggest misconception, misconception that I see probably in artists is them thinking that uh, they miss, they think art isn't, uh, can be, it's just, you sit back and you just draw whatever you want to draw and that's how you, that's how you get your career. And um, it's so much more than that and there's so much more work to it than that. And... Uh, and I think the other thing too is a lot of young artists wanting it now, wanting the the the, the skills and the the reward, um, wanting it now. And it just it just takes time. It's you know I, I've talked about this in on past uh, streams where. You know, through no fault of your own, this is a generation that is used to getting things instantly, right? Instant knowledge. You all you got to do is say, "Hey Google, you know, what was number one movie in 1982?" And boom, there's your answer. And so, growing up in that world, you you get used to you know getting things quickly. And there's certain things that just will not happen quickly. And one of those is building up skills. It just takes time. And practice. In digital painting, what's your approach to objects that have pure white or pure black local color? 
Well, then that's the low. If it's pure white or pure black local color, then you're 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 not thinking about the local color, right? Because you already know it's black or white. You're looking at the light. So is that pure white in shadow? And if it's in shadow, what color is it picking up in shadow? Is it blue light? Is it warm light? What is it? So um, I don't worry about what the local color is. I think about what's the color of the of of the actual light. I'm gonna try a different pen. I want to see if I can get a finer, finer nib. Do you have any videos or courses on gesture drawing? Oh, you know what? I don't. But I like that idea. Well, I know that uh, in the recent animal videos, um, each one has had their own gesture tutorial video. But yeah, yeah I don't think I don't think you've done it. Yeah, like. Not like a human gesture tutorial or anything. Yeah, I know. We'll add that to the list. <laughs> yeah, man. Do you have any videos on courses on gesture drawing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see me turn? <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I uh, think this, that's, this that's brush it. is much better. <laughs> So a little inside joke from from a uh, what when was that last week? Yeah, uh, what was it, it last, was last week? But it was well, yeah, it was recent. <laughs> Repeating the same question. Now, how did you get hired by Disney? Uh, the way I got hired by Disney was you know back in the day when I started working for Disney, there was no you know the animation hadn't made a big comeback and. Uh, it was still it was still something they were trying to get back off the ground. They'd had some mild success with the Great Mouse Detective, but that was about it. And so when I came along, um, I wanted to work for National Geographic. That was my goal. Uh, but I found out soon uh, that all they did was freelance, and I didn't want to freelance. Uh, so I decided to look at other options, and I found out that Disney was coming to our school. I was going to Ringling College of Art and Design at the time. And so uh, to re they were coming to recruit. What they were wanting to do was see if they could find people that could draw, not necessarily animate, and see if they could teach them animation. And so uh, Ringling was one of those schools that they decided to go and recruit from. And so luckily I, uh, I was accepted into the intern program I thought I might go in as a background painter or, or something like that, and uh, but lucky for me, I was matched up with an animator named Glenn Keane, and uh, Glenn was one of the top animators, is one of the top animators in the world, and uh, so I was very lucky, and um, and he just really showed me the magic of what animation can be, and it was after that you know, I, I I was hired. And I finished up college and then started at Disney, and uh, and it was after that that you know we made Beauty and the Beast and Lion King and Aladdin and all those films and everything took off from there. Uh, what's the difference between uh, visual development, concept art, and illustration? Well, visual development and concept art are the same thing. It's just two different labels. Concept art is you're developing an idea. It's a concept, right? And visual development is you're developing an idea. So it's the same. It's the same thing. There's two different names for the same thing. Illustration is usually it's kind of the same thing because you can you know you can you a concept art piece it can be is an illustration, um, but it's uh, it's just a matter of how you label it. A lot of times, illustration is for books and magazines and and that sort of thing. Is it better to be freelance or full-time office? For me, I like full-time office. Or, let me take that back. I'm, I'm working in a full-time office right now, in my office. Um, and I've got my own business. Uh, if you want to call that freelance, you can, but I don't really freelance because of what we do here. It's, it's a little more unique than that. Uh, but I, I, you know, I worked at the studio for... 
21 years. I worked at Disney for 21 years. And, uh, oh, shoot. One of those things over here. Uh -uh. I'll put these over here. Uh, I worked at the studio for 21 years, and I really enjoyed it. And I think working in the studio for that long prepared me for what I'm doing now. So what I'm doing here now is I'm looking at the highlights of my reference and using this white jelly roll pen to draw in, rather than using black brush, I'm using white pen to draw this in. Why do people still choose to animate with flipping paper? Why? Because that's, that's just a, that's like asking why people still choose to paint with a paintbrush, I guess. It's, you know, it's been done for a long time, and so people can still do it that way. You know, it's, you don't need technology. You don't need a computer. You don't need, you know, any fancy equipment. You can just sit down and start drawing, and you can still create life and animation. And there's something, I think, really cool about that, still having that ability traditionally. It's so therapeutic and calming watching others create art. Does it relax you, Aaron, when you're creating? Oh, of course. It's my favorite thing to do. Drawing, painting, you know, that's, even though it's my job, um, it's still my favorite thing to do. You know, it's, a, it's an old saying, if you, if you can find a job doing the thing you love, you'll never work a day in your life, right? And uh, that's pretty much how I feel about what I do here. Are there still jobs for car cover artists, um, kind of like, or uh, magazine illustrators? Oh, of course. There's tons of work out there. Absolutely. Is learning visual arts a great way to understand traditional art? Say that again? Is learning visual arts a great way to understand traditional art? Traditional art is visual arts, so I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Um, I think, the, think they're talking maybe like sketching, like maybe a statue or maybe, that, that's my best assessment. Yeah, I'm not sure. Not sure I understand the question, sorry. But we're getting there, we're getting there on this, you know, we're getting the little sketch going. I'm going to add a little bit of... Is there any animal that you haven't drawn that you yet that you would love to learn to draw? Um, not really. I mean, I've pretty much drawn all the animals that I'm, I'm really interested in. There's a lot of animals I've never seen before that I'd love to see. Um, a lot of marine animals that I'd, I'd love to see, you know, in, in, in person. You know, a blue whale. I'd love to see a blue whale. Can you show your uh, um, the reference that you're using one more time? Yeah. Got a couple of late bloomers there. So here's my reference that I'm looking at. This is a photo that I shot uh, in Montana. Uh, we I spent the whole day with this mountain lion and uh, got a lot of great uh, images of him. Kind of looks like a puma. It is a puma. <laughs> puma, mountain lion. So a puma is panther. a mountain lion? Yes. Puma is a mountain lion. And the key also with this, you know, using the white pen is to not, uh, making sure that you don't go too much with it. Use it sparingly. Here, I've got some really bright highlighted areas, so I'm using a fair amount of it. But at the same time, I want to be careful not to go overboard with it and use it everywhere. Just because there's an area that has local color, white fur, doesn't mean I'm going to use the white pen. For instance, the chin right here, or this part of the muzzle where it's not dark, that's white fur, but it's in shadow. So I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to hit it with a white pen. There's a little piece here that's catching a little bit of light. I'll throw a little bit of 
little, just a little bit of white right there. But other than that, I'm not going to hit that. I feel you need to do the Bob Ross voice again. <laughs> Was that a request? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somebody okay. asked for it. This is a master of your world. You can, you can paint anything you want here. I'm just putting in a whole bunch of happy fur. Whole happy bunch of happy fur. fur. Happy fur, happy fur. It doesn't matter. This is your universe. <laughs> it was your animal. This is your pet. That's right. You can paint anything you want. Th this one here is my my pet. His name's Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy here's a real happy happy puma. <laughs> I got a little bit of excess graphite on here, so I'm gonna just gumming up my my white pen. Gumming up my white pen. Then we go with Bob Ross legend. He is a legend. I love Bob Ross. He was my, he's the guy that inspired me to do what I'm doing now. Teaching, bringing art to you guys. I started looking at Bob Ross and how popular he was and everything he had to say and the positive vibes he put out there. And I try to be generally positive and realize we had this thing called the internet that we can just reach everybody around the world and so we started talking about it and next thing you know here we are yeah the past few few years um i i can't remember if they've done only once or they do it every year now um on bob ross's birthday week uh -huh. they would do on twitch they would um they would broadcast all of his old uh episodes of his show oh really and it would be the number one viewed channel of all, all of Twitch for that week. <laughs> I love it. So these whiskers are out in the uh, are in the sunlight. So I'm going to paint them in, draw them in, but I want. Which do you think is better for highlights? Uh, a white Prisma Prisma pencil or Jelly Roll? Well, Jelly Roll is more opaque. So it depends on, but you can't get really soft gradations with a Jelly Roll like you can with a pencil. So it really depends on what you're looking for. So if you're looking to go softer, then you go pencil. But if you want the more harder edges, maybe then than the jelly roll. Yep. You can see here, when I do these whiskers, I don't, I just draw them in really quick, real easy. Just draw them. What made you want to work with uh, with Disney back then? Uh, I wanted a job. It really was that simple. I wasn't really thinking about, oh my gosh, I gotta work for Disney. I want to work for Disney. I never had any desire ever as a kid to ever work for Disney. For me, I, um, I wanted to be an animal artist. And then when the opportunity to work for Disney uh, presented itself, then I thought, hey man, this could be a, a pretty cool job. Uh, like, like I said, I thought I might be a background painter or something like that. And it just kind of grew over time into what it, into what it became. I became hooked on animation. Now, I liked I liked being an animator that was also a painter and designer and things like that. It really, I think it helped me in my career. So once again, I, and you'll see that I'll jump back and forth between the white, uh, the white and the brush pen and the Copic marker. Does Dustin draw? I don't know, Dustin, do you draw? A little bit. I'm not I'm not at my dad's level, but I draw a little bit. I haven't really done like drawing like that in a while. I mainly do like titles and uh, and kind of like some like um, graphic art. I guess Dustin, you could yeah, say. you have a good eye. You Thank just you. you just doing drawing and doing art never 
was the thing that interested you the way that it interested me when I was a kid. Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back over. I got a kind of a nice little balance. Well, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna come up here. How's that looking? Can you see it pretty good on there? Oh yeah, it's coming out nice. I don't know if we should be should we be more I mean, zoomed in on it a little bit. You want to zoom in on it a little bit more? I think it I think it's fine right right now. It's just the um, the charcoal is just a little. Why don't you it, zoom in on it just a little bit, Dustin? All right. Yeah, just a little bit. I think I think we can. We don't need all that extra space. You, know, you can be able to see a little more detail. Go ahead, a little more. A little more. There we go. That's good. Right there. Yeah. All right. Bam. And the paper that you're currently using is your is your preferred paper. The paper I'm using right now is my preferred paper. Correct. And for the latecomers, what what kind of paper is that again? This is Strathmore gray Strathmore paper. And you like it because of the the gray tone. I love it because of the gray tone. It enables me to create full value drawings, but I can start with the gray tone and work outward and work in both directions. I can go lighter and I can go darker. I like the ability to go lighter, which you can't do on white paper. I mean, you could, but you got to tone it, right? 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 Why do you prefer drawing animals over people? Uh, I've just always been fascinated by animals. Uh, I, still, I like to draw people okay, but I've always found animals, for me, more interesting. There's just something there that I find more interesting. How do you find all the patience to draw the details? I, to me, it's like a zen. And I just, I just kind of lose myself in it. And just, I think about life and whatnot, <laughs> and just kind of roll with it. And I, to me, it, it, it's it's that. It's just like a Zen experience for me. I heard Copics are alcohol based and highly odorific. Does a Jelly Roll <laughs> pen have a strong smell? No, not at all. Odorific. I like odorific, that. Odorific. I know. Odiferous. Odiferous. There we go. Do you ever have creative block? Um, not as much as I used to. I mean, there's times where I'll sit down and go, okay, what am I going to do today and not really know what I'm going to do, but I usually break through it pretty easily. There's days that I just can't, it feels like I can't get anything working that looks any good you know and it's especially maddening when you're doing that live i've had that happen you know we, we did that live stream the other day with bigfoot and i really struggled with that on that day oh well, um, you got through it oh yeah you just get through it and you don't worry about it and... oh yeah 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 i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the future, please, could you make a little animation on paper, um, uh, on live stream? You like know what? animation on paper? Yep. Actually, actually, I'm going to actually do this. Paper flipper? Let's see. Does that look feel like that if I do that? I don't know. I think so. Uh, yes. Um, matter of fact, I think the next one that we do uh, next week, let's just say it. Next week, we'll do animation on paper. Yeah, because I think the this test run... Uh, of this camera angle is working out very well. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Do you always finish your sketchbooks? I'm asking because I can never finish one myself. Yeah, but it just, just draw a lot. You gotta draw a lot, man. <laughs> or woman, whoever, whatever the case might be. Are you familiar with the animator artist Leonard uh, Robinson? No. I'm not. 
Whoop, just dropped my pen. And Why all, would you do that? I'm all tangled up in wires here. Come here, pen. <laughs> Come hither, pen. There we go. So now, I'm going to go the opposite. Now I'm going into my darks. How old were you when you really took to realism? Uh, well, for, for me, realism was the first thing I ever learned. And not even learned, but that's what I just started drawing. So, and I started drawing, you know, I started drawing faces and things like that when I was two years old. But I was, I really, when I really started, like, studying and wanting to be an animal artist and, you know, drawing animals and birds and things like that, I think I was about six or seven years old. And um, that was, I just loved drawing, you know, ducks and geese, and those were my first, the first drawings that I did. Wayne Carnegie asks, how is your super creative brother? <laughs> He's in China. He is? Yeah. What is he doing over there? Uh, he's helping out with a friend of ours who has a studio in Shanghai. And uh, they are working in Shanghai. Wow. Now he's going to be there. Uh, he's going to be there until, what, uh, until August 5th. Really? Yeah. Wow. 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 <laughs> wow. How do you know if it's going to turn out good, like when you're, when you do a drawing? Well, I take my time, and I plan ahead. I look, I, I'm very careful along the way, and I just, it's a marathon, right? I think of it as a marathon. I don't think of it as, you know, sometimes it's a sprint, you know, just do, doing quick gestures and things like that, and that's okay. But... I just take my time and know that it's going to be good. But I have been doing this a long time. I'm 50. 50. I'm 50. <laughs> and so as a result of being 50, I have a lot of life experience drawing. So I just take my time. Would you please make some snow leopard videos in the future? Yeah. Uh, I'm not an expert at snow leopards just because I haven't been able to draw very many. But um, I'll do what I can. I'll do what I can. What? I'm not even sure if I should say this one. Well, then don't. <laughs> if it's... If it's questionable material don't no I'm, I mean it's not that bad but oh, okay uh, let's see here is it about a moose no it's not about a moose <laughs> <laughs> Aaron is always open to suggestions it's amazing I'm pretty sure if Dustin asked for a live stream about how to animate a twerk and air will be okay. <laughs> oh, I can animate a twerk. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. You want a twerk? We'll animate a twerk. We'll make the hippo twerk. <laughs> but I can't animate it without the reference, Dustin. Oh, God. <laughs> and that for me is why I say no. <laughs> <clears throat> So it's slowly coming together. You know, it's not a quick sketch, that's for sure. But I like doing these little brush pen drawings. They're really a lot of fun. And once again, it's I'm really being careful about my value structure. Values meaning light and dark. Where I'm putting my light areas and dark areas and whatnot and so forth and so what. And, mm -hmm. 
Would you ever do animation for games? I get that question every time, don't I? I um I think if it was the right game, it's not gaming animation doesn't really interest me. Uh, but I mean there are certain. What's the one that that we were talking about before the animation game? With Cuphead. The, the, what's it? Cuphead. Yeah, Cuphead. Like that nineteen twenties, thirties. Yeah, I like Cuphead. I like that kind of stuff. I think that would be fun to draw that. You know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you ever played Cuphead? I have not, but I really, really want to. Is it a game you can just go out and buy? It is. Wow. I'm just, I'm just a little, little broke at the moment. But yeah, I've heard from people that um, it can get very difficult very quick. Oh, really? Yeah, like it's a really, really hard game. I know you answered this already earlier, but this person just came in late. Uh, but do you always draw with reference? No, I don't always draw with reference. Uh, I would say I draw with reference about half the time. This time I'm drawing with reference just so basically I can turn turn off that part of my brain or I'm looking for the anatomy and all that sort of thing and I can just get in here and draw. Would you ever do video lessons about animating birds and or creatures in flight? Yep, I'm actually, we're gonna be doing that actually. You so, think that's gonna be the next one or? No, it's not gonna it? be the next one. The next one I'm working on, I'm working on a couple, but uh, the next one I'm trying, the big one that I wanna get done is I'm doing uh, an acting for animation course, specifically acting. Ooh. But I need to do a lot of animation for the course, and so it's just going to take a while. And that's why that's going to be the big one. Yeah. But I'm really excited about it, because it's right up my alley. And I like talking about my, my philosophies on acting and how to put that into your animation. I love talking about that kind of stuff. When do you think the release date for that would be? That I don't know. I can't, I can't even speculate. It's really going to take a long time to do the animation. It'll be, I'd like to get it out this year. Let's say that. How many, how many parts will it be? Like three, four? Oh no, there's going to be, I've already got 16 or 17 different. I've been brainstorming all the subject matter. Really? Grab that pile of paper over there. This one? Yeah. So the top. Yeah, right here. <laughs> you know, uh, how to simplify acting within the pose, um, layering rhythms within your performance, emotional hang time, how to, you know, figuring out the movement style, facial posing, engaging the body, exaggeration, clarity, not reality, um, animating thoughts, not words, using props, animating personality, looking for contrast, body language. Um, how do you relate to a scene? What makes it real? All these, these are all different subjects that I'm brainstorming uh, that I'll be covering um, in the course. So it's going to be a really big one. Yeah. It's going to be big. Big! It's all the things I think about when I'm animating. Do you know a cat's uh, skeletal system? Pretty much. Pretty, pretty well, I think. Do you need to understand the skeleton before, under, before you can understand the drawing? Yeah, I think you do. I think you need to understand the skeleton. I think you also need most, but more importantly, I think you need to understand the musculature, the masses, because that really defines obviously the form, right? And so, if you don't understand those forms or the, those, the understructure of what's making those forms, you're not going to truly understand what it is that you're creating. And even more so, you won't be able to draw it out of your head accurately. Do you ever do meet and greets? Anything to where any of us uh, fans could pick your brain in person? I do occasionally do stuff around the country. 
um, and I do travel around the world. Um, I'm going to be in the Philippines. I'm going to be in Manila, uh, September uh, 13th and 14th. Ooh. Um, doing some lectures there, and then uh, I'm going to be in Colorado. Uh, where else am I going to be in September? September. Oh, in Colorado at the end of September, uh, I'm going to be doing some workshops out there with some with folks near. Uh, or near, um, I think it's Pueblo. I'll be doing some stuff there, and, um, and then I'm going to be back in Tokyo in October for a few days, giving some lectures there, and Osaka, Japan. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, and then uh, you know we've got a few other things planned, but I, yes, the answer. And I'm, we're planning. Uh, we're currently trying to plan another Brazil trip. Are we going to be visiting um, CTN in November? Yes. We will always be at CTN. And that's usually in the middle of November? Yes. Yep. So this is slowly coming together. Yeah. Just taking my time, taking my time. Taking your sweet time. <laughs> <laughs> random. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> really <laughs> random. It's all random. Do you attend? Kill the, the queen. <laughs> Do you attend Comic Con? No, not this year. I won't be. Uh, but I think we're gonna. It's. I'm not. I don't sell wares. I don't set up a booth. You know that sort of thing. It's just not something I do. Um, we might just go just for the heck of it. But I, I'm not. You know, Comic Con is not something that we shoot for. And plus, it's so huge <laughs> yeah I'm not one as anybody that, that might know me I You're really not. have an anxiety with crowds yeah I'm not a big fan of crowds you would blow yeah. a ga casket or no casket, casket. casket. <laughs> maybe a casket he, he probably would hop into a casket yeah I <laughs> in really, like the first 10 feet yeah I can't stand crowds <laughs> Yeah, of all the conventions that I've been to, Comic Con has been the one that I haven't gone, but I really want to. You are such a jerk. Dustin. I am. I am <laughs> such a jerk. Because you and I went together. We Remember, didn't... we rode the train to San Diego, and we went together. We didn't go to Comic Con. Yes, we did. No, we, we did not. Yes, we did too. No, we went to CTN. No, I, ne I never. I never been. We lived Con in Los Angeles. We went down to Comic Con. No, we didn't. In, in San Diego. No, we took the train. We never went to sit to Comic Con. I'm so disappointed. We've never you you probably took someone else. Maybe, I've never, maybe I've never it was been my other son. I think I took my other son. <laughs> I don't remember Comic Con at all. Oh, I, I remember. I took my favorite son. That's what it was. We probably went to San Diego for a different reason. San fact, I never Diego. Even, I never even went on a, I've never even been on a train. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying, now you've got me rattling my brain to think if I took somebody else. You probably did. How long ago was it? It was. You said it was back when we were living in, uh, in L.A.? Yeah, it was probably 2005. Yeah, I've never. Maybe we, pl maybe we planned on it, but never. No, we went. Well, you I went. went. I, I never. Went. Okay, whatever. Let's get back. To <laughs> back to our regularly scheduled program. Is Aaron uh, being familiar with the CG animation work? No. Do I, do I do I do CG animation? Is that the question? I think it's more of like, how, are you familiar with with the with the animation CG? Uh, yeah, maybe like if you like tried it or anything like that. Maybe no. I don't. I don't do CG. I've directed CG film films, but I personally I don't know how to do. I don't know the hard or the software. So, um, it's just nothing, it's something I've never learned. It's 
So here I'm just kind of jumping around. Awfully quiet. I'm trying to pick a question. So here, I'm trying, I want to get the texture of the fur in here without really overdoing it. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the negative spaces in my reference, the shadow areas between the clumps of fur, and that's what I'm painting. That's what I'm drawing, the well, negative spaces. What was the most difficult uh, painting you ever made? The most this difficult far. painting I've ever done. There was a really big elephant portrait that I did. You know, I went to Africa in 1998, my first trip there, and we got chased by this big elephant, this big, when we were in Tanzania. And as we were backing out in the Land Rover and trying to back away before she ran us over, I was snapping pictures the whole way. So when I got back, when we got back to, uh, Florida, I did a giant portrait of her. It took me a month or so, and uh, I really loved that painting. And it was, and it was, it was difficult. It was a hard painting to do. So that was probably, probably my most difficult. But they're all hard. All paintings are hard. There's no such thing as easy paintings. There's less hard ones. You know, I think I figured it out. I think you went with Uncle Travis and you mistaken him for me. You know what? You probably you might be right. Because you always mix up our names. So you probably mixed up our identities at this point <laughs> with, with that trip. Because he always he constantly goes to Comic Con in San Diego. I know that for a fact. I, I thought for sure you went. I wanted to go but I've never got I never gotten the chance to go. How could I be so wrong? <laughs> How could I be so wrong? Trust me, if I if I've been, I would remember. <laughs> Alright, enough of Comic Con. Enough of Comic Con. Um, when doing art, how do you get texture and make it look like it's coming out of the paper? Well that really has to do with value, right? Value meaning light and dark. So and it's and it's fooling the eye. It's telling the eye, using those light and dark values, you're telling the viewer's eye that there's something there that isn't really there and so you just have to make sure that your values are accurate in the case here i'm trying very hard to not overdo the textures and i'm having a little bit of a hard time but i think it's coming out okay oh yeah it's coming out coming out great Great. It's great. What's your favorite uh, zoo to draw at? You know what? Uh, I love San Diego Zoo, obviously, in San Diego, California. I went uh, over the summer, last summer in June, I went to a place called Tama Zoo in Tokyo. And I think that's probably one of the best zoos I've ever been to is for, for an artist. The zoo was almost empty. And usually when I go to the zoo to draw, I get mobbed by people uh, that want to see what I'm doing. And at the Tama Zoo, I drew to my heart's content. And I didn't have people looking over my shoulder or asking me questions. I was just drawing and just having a wonderful... So Tamazoo in Tokyo was really cool. How long does that pen usually last? These pens last forever. I don't think that I've ever used one up. Because I'll, I'll lose them. I end up <laughs> losing them before I use them up. Or I'll put the cap on wrong and the, and the bristles will get all mushed. Uh, and I'll have to just use a different, go to a different pen. Are you they really, using? They really last a long time. Are you currently using different uh, sizes of brushes? Of no, brush I just I've, I found one that's nice, fine tip. Can you see that? Is that in focus? Uh, try. <laughs> try try going, backing up, and then. 
There you go. Now it's focusing on your hand. <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. It's focusing. There it is. <laughs> now we see the fine detail of his hand. <laughs> <laughs> The fine details of his hand. What are your go-to highlighters while sketching? What's that? What are your go-to highlighters while, while well, sketching? Well, my uh, Jelly Roll pen. Boop. Boop. My Faber-Castell felt tip white. Or uh, white paint. I've also got white India ink that I'll use from time to time, from time to time. How do you deal with people mobbing you while drawing in public? Um, I, there's times that it bothers me and there's other times that I just treat it as an opportunity to make friends, really. When I was in China and I would get mobbed, uh, it was really a great opportunity to experience other culture and and make, you know, it's almost like, you know, I like making friends with people in other countries and using art as the icebreaker. It's always, I don't know, it's always interesting. I always meet really cool people that way. I just love, love hearing the stories of how the, the people over there would just like lean right over your shoulder. Oh yeah, they just get right in my, yeah, the, the personal space is uh, culturally is a little different over in China and so they think nothing of coming right in and just sitting right there and getting right in there and seeing what you're doing which I thought was really kind of it was kind of cool <laughs> uh, do you get uncomfortable when that happens when they're looking right over your shoulder like that not at all or self-conscious no not at all I like it like I said it's an opportunity to make friends and I'll strike up conversations and you know, a lot of times we don't speak the same language, so we'll we'll laugh and do sign language or something. And uh, I don't know, it's cool. It's really cool, 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 cool. I'm really interested in attending in attending one of your uh, travel and teach lessons. Uh, from where can I get the details for that? Well, uh, a lot of times the the travel co things that I do are. A lot of times they're not open to the public. They're sponsored events uh, for schools and things like that. So, and they're really infrequent. So I right now, I'm not sure of anything that I need to know where you are uh, to tell you if we're going to be doing anything. One thing that we might start doing in the future um, are doing workshops where people come to me, or we might start doing some drawing and painting workshops. Oh, here in town? Here in Florida, yeah. And you'll be having people traveling from all over the world. Well, that would be <laughs> the, that'd be the that'd hope. That would be the hope for sure. That would be amazing. Yeah, I would love that. How do you protect your hands from drawing fatigue? Uh, I don't get drawing fatigue. But I, you know, I just make sure to take a little bit of... I take a break every once in a while. How's that looking on there? Oh, it's coming together. Yeah, it's looking nice. Yeah. And what brand is that, that pen again? I can't... Uh, Too close. Back come on, up focus. Just back it up. Focus. Just back it up. Back it up. Come on, focus. Just focus on it. There it is. There it is. That's it. Kirtaki? Bemoji. Bimoji. Bimoji? Did you work as an in-betweener when you were at Disney? Um, I started out actually as an assistant. I've done lots of in-betweening. I started out as an assistant. That was my first job. And uh, the job of, of an assistant was to clean up the keys the rough drawings of the animator, the key drawings, and get them set up for the in-betweener to add the, the drawings in between to smooth out the action. 
Do you enjoy drawing creatures more than drawing humans? And if so, why do you enjoy it? We had that question too. I know, but for yeah, like, but that's, like, that is a good, it's a good question. Uh, I just find animals more interesting. Uh, I like drawing humans, okay, but I'm fascinated by the by the other Earthlings that we share this world with. And so, I love drawing the things that maybe not a lot of people get to see or experience. And I like to go out and experience them myself. And then share those experiences through my drawings. That really gives me a rush. With animation, how do you keep consistency? Be, um, because the more frames I do, uh, the more out of shape the character gets. Well, that just really, you have to constantly watch for that. Exactly what you're saying is what you, you have to watch for that. So I'm constantly checking back with my original drawing, my first drawing. And, you know, and then about halfway through I check. Uh, with that drawing as well, I make sure that all the sizes stay consistent. Shapes, you know, that's what you have to do. You have to watch for that kind of stuff. How did you meet Miyazaki and did you learn anything from him? Um, we were promoting, we had just finished directing, I just finished directing Brother Bear and it was getting released in um, Asia and we were doing all of the press uh, in Tokyo and so um, I was doing a lot of interviews and television and things like that in Tokyo and uh, the opportunity came up for us to go to Studio Ghibli and they asked us if we wanted to go and I went yeah of course and so they set up a meeting between uh, Miyazaki and myself and my co-director Bob Walker and our producer Chuck Williams and, and um, and we just, we sat there and we just had a nice, wonderful conversation. Did you learn anything from, from him? Uh, we didn't, I don't know that we learned, I mean, we, I learned that he's a really cool dude. And uh, I asked him if he liked Brother Bear and he said, mm, no, not very much. <laughs> oh, really? Went, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, okay. <laughs> Just straight to the point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you sell art pieces? Not very often. No, I haven't sold any original art in a long time. I don't really push it anymore. I, you know, teaching is more, that's my thing now. And so I do my art for my teaching, but most of my art I just keep. Uh, what is or your favorite app one. for uh, digital drawing? What, say that again? What's your favorite uh, app for digital drawing? Photoshop. Just because I'm just so used to it. That's all I use is Photoshop. What would your reaction be if a child looking at one of your drawings opens Open his eyes wide, saying that it's horrible. <laughs> I've had kids do that. Really? Oh yeah. You actually had kids go. It's terrible. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what I love about kids. They're they're honest. <laughs> this goes straight to the point. Yeah. Would you ever do a um, travel class at junior college? Um. Uh, yeah, I mean, if the if someone wanted me there, I've just never had a junior college that wanted me there. But if you are a person from a junior college that might want me there, then hell yeah. What animal would you recommend for someone to study in depth as a start point for animal drawing? I think any four-legged animals are a good place to start. You know, common common animals too. Something that you can see all over, you know, dogs, cats. I know that sounds boring, but that's a, it's a really good place to start because you're, 
you're drawing something familiar and there's a lot of them all over the place and you can find them you can there's a lot of accessibility I'm gonna switch over I'm gonna give the the dark a little bit of a break mm -hmm. I'm gonna switch over to the light pen yeah, Nick texted earlier about, about the Comic-Con. And uh, Austin says that she thinks her, her dad dreamt it because she's never been either. <laughs> well, I didn't take her because I didn't think she'd want to go. I'm pretty sure I took you. No. I think I think I I'm did. pretty sure you went with with uh, Uncle Travis. I know Tim Mertens was there. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe I went with Chuck. I went that with Chuck be, Williams. That's what it was. And you, you, I think you guys went to promote Brother Bear Comic Con, maybe? No. Was that it? No, no, we were just there to check things. I think I went with Chuck Williams. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. We officially solved the case. We have. Oh, so once again, speaking of Nick. Speaking of Nick. Nick. Hello, Hi, Nick. Nick. <laughs> um, just a, once again a little plug for the new storyboarding course that we have if you guys are interested in storyboarding um, we've got a brand new course on it done by my friend Lyndon Ruddy Lyndon currently works for Blue Sky he's worked for Disney he's worked for um, uh, Sony and uh just an amazing storyboard artist. He worked with me on The Legend of Tembo, where uh, that's where we, you know, we hired him for that film, and I was just blown away by the work that he did. And since then, we've become great friends. And so Nick and I just thought it was a no-brainer when it came to wanting to create a storyboard a course that we would get Lyndon to do it. Um, I've learned so much from Lyndon. And so he is, uh, like I said, currently at Blue Sky. But this course, it's about 14 hours worth of content. I, correct me if I'm wrong, Nick. Um, and it's just really full of some really great information. So uh, the pre-sale is ending today. Today is the last day for the pre-sale. Now, you'll still be able to get it. You just won't be able to get it at the discounted price that we're selling it at right now. So get over there if you're interested in storyboarding. Jump on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com, our website, and check it out. Do we have any other um, special guests coming out soon? Oh, uh, no. But we certainly can work towards that. So you can see by jumping back and forth between your white pen and the black pen for your outline of your character it really helps define that light source you see what I'm doing it really helps define that light source it'd be really cool um, be like if, killer if it did be like killer if it did <laughs> but um what if, um, actually, I'll, I'll, we can talk about it after this thing. But, um, so, personal question. Why do you go, what do you, why do you go back, back and forth between the, the dark, dark lines and go on to the highlights back and forth? Like How this? is that a personal question? Well, is not personal, but uh, me asking. Oh, you're asking. Say I'm that again. asking. Um, why are you going back and forth between the highlights and, and the darks instead of doing darks first and then highlights? It, it enables me to keep everything balanced. Gotcha. So when I'm going back and forth, I'm seeing, I'm building everything up together. Gotcha. So if I can build it together, then I can see how everything is kind of shaping up. Gotcha. Good question, by the way. Thank you. And whenever I say personal question, that's what I mean. It's my it's my own question to you. Gotcha. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm going to go in there with a little bit of. 
this pen is almost dead. Oh, really? Yeah, so I'm hoping I can get enough out of it. Drive me a nail on. don't see any so what I'm doing here is just kind of darkening the value a little bit around this cheek where it goes into shadow but like I said this pen is just about dead So he wrote, it's a zombie pen. Yeah. <laughs> have I you ever done Copics? Have you ever done stop motion? I never have done stop motion. No, and it's something I'd like to do. I'm going to try, I hope I don't regret this, but I'm going to try going dark with a dark pen. If you get the annual subscription to your site, will the storyboard class be included in it? Yep. It is included. What's your most memorable memory uh, from working with the with other artists at Disney? Oh man, uh, we just—it's not so much memory as it is just the the fun we had. We had so much fun. We met so many great people. Um, you know, that was that was really neat too. Is the the, the people we got to meet from, you know. I met Princess Diana to Robin Williams to President Carter. You know, you, you just you meet everybody. I think my personal favorite stories are from you are all the the prank stories, especially the uh, the coleslaw. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we um we used to do these pranks. Well, you know, we used to have you know big barbecues and things like that. And there was always food left over, cheese. Or whatever, and uh, one of the things we used to do with the cheese is you go into someone's office and you take the disc off, and then on the light right there, you put the cheese on the light and just let it go, just let it ferment. <laughs> and over time, it gets, it gets really nasty. <laughs> but the coleslaw one probably probably is like the best barbecue prank. Oh yeah, I personally think. Because it was all because one guy was making you and... Tim Hodge, lovely Tim Hodge, was playing playing my brother and I against each other. And, uh, sorry, I might bump the camera here. I need to find another pen. So, this is my art bag, by the way. And, uh, if you guys are interested in this bag, um, I have, I got it, it's a handmade by an Indian couple... Uh, Lilo Rosh. Look up Lilo Rosh on Facebook. L I L O R O S H. Um, they make these art bags to order, and um, I love them. I absolutely love them. And I am looking for a pen in here that I think is going to be worn out, but I'm going to use it anyway. Can you take this, Dustin? Yes. Because I'm tangled up in wires right now. Careful. 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 <laughs> so, back to the story. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Tim was playing my brother and I against each other. We just, My brother and I discovered... My brother was an animator, too, at Disney. We worked together. We worked in the same office, actually. And, yes, it was pretty cool working with your brother at Disney. And we... Um, so we discovered that Tim had been playing us by, you know, making it look like we were doing each other, doing pranks to each other. And so we kept retaliating against each other, not realizing that Tim was orchestrating the whole thing. And so once we figured that out, I grabbed a big stack of animation paper off of Tim's desk. And I went down about halfway into the stack and cut a big hole in the middle of the stack of paper. And after one of our uh, barbecues that we had at the studio, we went in and poured an entire 
tray of coleslaw <laughs> into the into the um, that hole in this paper, and um, and then closed it up, and it took him about a month to get to the the hole, and um, and he started hitting grease spots. <laughs> he started he pulled out a you know he pulled out a piece of paper and he'd put it down and it'd be a big grease spot right here. And he'd turn around and he'd go, hey, is anybody getting grease spots on their paper? <laughs> no, man, I don't know what to do with it. At that point, you were like, oh, that's, that's what... <laughs> I had forgotten about it. <laughs> I almost fell out of my chair laughing. It, it was really funny. And it, it, it stank more as oh he got, my God, as it so got bad. closer. It was black. Yeah, by the time I peeled the last one, he said it was uh, it was just it was black and <laughs> <laughs> like surprisingly there was no flies on it. Or no, it was oh my gosh, it was so bad. But it was funny. It was <laughs> all in the name of funny. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot, we pulled a lot of pranks on each other. So I'm almost done with this drawing. How are we doing on time, by the way? Uh, we're about an hour 21 in. Oh, okay. So, where am I at here? It's a Where's my pan? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do, I'm going to fade this out, let this detail kind of fade off, and then I'm going to call this drawing done. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I know it's, it's a little bit like watching paint peel, watching grass grow. So next well week we'll be doing um, uh, live flip an animation. Yeah, live, on Facebook? live hand drawn animation. Why not? On paper. On paper. Yeah. Yeah, because honestly, I'm I'm really enjoying this uh, the way this camera is angled and everything. Oh yeah. I, I like just I just think we need a a longer HDMI cord because it's kind of. Wrap the wires wrapped around you. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, from a certain angle, it kind of looks like you have a. I know. I'm like a like a sash. A sash. It's a it's a sash wire. <laughs> you better you better work. You better work. Yeah. <laughs> Where <But>, come <laughs> I am. Um, I uh. I like I like doing more traditional stuff too. I want to I want to do more of that with you guys. Especially now that we got a good system down. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe the next one might the next uh, one after the uh, animation. Maybe we could do a watercolor. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Uh, what are the what are the types of uh, jobs that are available um, uh, for an, for an animal illustrator? Uh, I think it's a lot of well, far, first of all, it's a lot of fine art, but um, but I think you know any kind of natural history magazines and things like that that require illustrations of animals. That's obviously going to be your market. Uh, doesn't the spiral of your paper from your sketchbook bother you? Uh, why yeah. don't you turn the canvas 180 degrees? Oh, uh, just because I flip my book left to right, or right to left, right? So I just happen to be on this page. But that's a good question. Do you ever use watercolor pencils? I never use watercolor pencils, no. Matter of fact, I don't know that I ever have. A lot of people are saying, watercolor, yes! Oh, good. Okay. Do you use smudge sticks? No. I don't... Uh, when I'm drawing, I don't... I try not to... I, I like the... I try not to smear a whole lot. Sometimes if I'm doing charcoal, I will. Do you draw any bioluminescent creatures? Ooh. Ooh. And actually, that'd be really a really cool thing. Try to make a um, try to make certain creatures of 
Earth have like bioluminescent features to them. Yeah. Like maybe like an elephant with glowing ears or a rhino with with a with a tipped horn. Good idea, yeah. That would be pretty freaking sweet. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna wrap this up. How are we looking on there? That's kind of coming together. He's looking sexy. True. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, you sound like Stitch. Our Hannah family. Can Stitch sell your barrel? Um, could you spell out the name uh, for the art bag again? Oh, uh. L I L O R O S H Lilo Rush Lilo Rush Look them up on Facebook. I think I said that right. Lilo Lilo Rush. That's their business page. And uh the bag I I've taken this bag to I think like 18 different countries over the last two years and uh, it really holds up it's been around <laughs> yeah their their quality is so good and they can make anything to order I've got another one hanging up over here over there that's 18 it's the same type of bag but I wanted something bigger for when I do my big drawing at the zoos and so it's an 18 by 24 it's huge huge I don't know if this was answered already but will the digital painting you recently did of a wolf lying behind a tree uh, be available in your print store it's one of my favorites uh, of your works oh um, we can make it available thank you for reminding me your wish is our command So the bag's not a sponsor. <laughs> no, no, I just love their I love their product. I try to plug Lilo and Rosh any chance I get. I really, they they do not. No, they don't sponsor me in any way at all. They're just really good people, and so anytime I meet really good people that are honest and struck, you know, they they are not struggling. They are making it. They they're such entrepreneurs. With, with what they're doing, and uh, and so any chance I get, I try to promote them because I, you know, I I'm a big believer in supporting small business, especially something like that. Uh, yeah. So I so I recommend uh, bioluminescent big cat on live stream next week. That, <laughs> <laughs> we know you want it, that's but for just, reals, that would be that, great to see. That's right? just crazy talk. Oh come on, that'd be awesome. You'd probably do a bioluminescent lion. <laughs> it would be so cool. That'd be cool. All right, let me see if I can, I want to get a little bit more here. See, I don't think I can get enough out of this. Brush. You can do it. I'm smearing some of the ink because it's not quite dried yet. Uh -oh. It's okay. We're going to get through this together. How much was the, the bag? Uh, I can't remember. I think it's 35 for, I, I just remember it was very, very, very reasonable for what I got. What was the most fun thing to animate at Disney? Oh man, you know, everything was fun. I uh I loved animating Roger Rabbit. Cuz it was just a fun character. Yeah, he was just a lot of fun to draw. Ooh, somebody for for the bioluminescent idea, somebody recommends a clouded leopard with bioluminescent spots. That's crazy talk. You know you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of, 
I really kind of want to do like a dark area down in here, but I'm afraid I'm going to destroy it. What is the one pen you can't do without? One pen? I yes. would say just a regular ballpoint pen. Something you can't do without? Yeah, because it's so versatile, I can do so much with it. All right, I'm just going to do it. I'm just, I'm going for it. I might ruin it. Yeah, I can see that I'm already ruining it, but... About your How to Draw Wolves, Coyotes, and Foxes course, I absolutely love it. Yay, thank you for that. See, what I, the reason I want to do this is I want that white fur that's in shadow to pop. And I want it to feel like it's white fur in shadow. Wow, you did Roger Rabbit? Yeah, I worked on several Roger Rabbit short cartoons. See, when it, in order to avoid weird marker things, I draw in different directions and just create a texture. Have you ever worked with Chris Sanders? Yeah. We used to work together in the same studio. Yep. Well, while I was directing Brother Bear, he was directing Lilo and Stitch. But we were both working at the animal, of the Florida studio. I know Chris Sanders very well. Do you have any cat tattoos? I do not. Here, that's not so bad, I guess. How's that look on there? Yeah. Did you animate? Um, did you animate or just de uh, design uh, Nala in Lion King? I designed and animated her. Did you animate anything else in there, or was yeah, it I just... helped out with Simba. Yeah, because Nala, there wasn't a whole lot of Nala, so once I finished Nala, I jumped over and helped out with Simba with Mark Hen. And, and picking up from, from Nala to Simba is probably easy because their anatomies are so similar. Yeah. Were you, were you animating young, young Simba? Yeah. And actually, jump over to the, the Logitech camera, Dustin. Yeah. If you jump over to the Logitech camera, that photo back there, that's a picture of me. Um, and yet I don't normally keep a photo of myself <laughs> looking, <laughs> looking at me. But um, that's a photo of me working on The Lion King at this desk, actually, at this very desk. But um, in that shot, I'm actually working on um, a shot of Adult Simba. Way back when. Yeah. So go ahead and switch it back. Yeah, I think we're... How's that feel? I like it. And I like the scratch style uh, shading for the, for the background. Yeah, see how it now, uh, even though it's in shadow, it feels like that's white fur on the chin, doesn't it? Yeah. See? You got to keep that, keep your values straight. It kind of feels like one of those faded black and white pictures. Yeah. Like something you get from like an old like 1930s film. Yeah. Just adding a little bit of texture and fur here. They said, Dan, this would look amazing in glow in the dark. <laughs> there we go. Have you ever seen those those kinds of art where it'll be hand drawn like this, but then they'll use a, like an invisible ink underneath? And so when you shine a black light, it turns into a completely different artwork. Oh, no, I've never seen that. Like there's one where um, I saw on Facebook where um, it was Batman with his like, with his traditional like uh, glare right, right to the camera. 
but when you shine a black light onto it in the dark, uh-huh. the the face changes from Batman to Joker. Oh wow! And with like the the old the good old fashioned ha ha um, signs like all over the artwork. So like at night it's Joker, then at day it's Batman. Oh, that's cool. Hairs, just a few finishing touches. You always say that you have a visual library. Which subject is saved best in this library? So you can draw it mo most lifelike without reference? Yes. Yeah, that's. Uh, I'd say any of the big cats. Lots of animals. Any of the big cats. Um, wolves. But it's like anything else. The more you study, the more you'll get stuff in there. But yeah, I probably I probably got a lot of birds in my head too. Is there is there a favorite drawing of a cat that you've done? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that I have a favorite drawing of a cat. This one. This is my current favorite right now. <laughs> Whatever one I'm finishing. If it's finished, it's my favorite. Adding the little adding the little whiskers. Yep. Adding the whiskers. There we go. Have you ever drawn a macabre before and will you do an ink drawing of one? Uh, I've never drawn a macaw, um, but I, sure, I could do one. And what's the date today? Today to is the 13th? Today is uh, the 12th. It's the 12th. Tomorrow's the 13th. Everybody be careful, it's Friday the 13th. <laughs> no, it's not Friday the 13th. Today's uh, Wednesday. Uh, oh, it is. Oh, that's right. Tomorrow's oh, Wednesday. Oh, I, I was thinking today was Wednesday. No, if it was Wednesday, we wouldn't be live streaming. We wouldn't be live streaming. <laughs> Dummy. <laughs> All right, just a few more little final touches. Any advice in, on developing your own art style? Yeah, draw a lot. And then your style will emerge. Don't try to find a style. Too many people are trying to, they try to find a style. Just draw the way, what, in the way that it interests you and your style will emerge. Absolutely. Style is the result of time. Your style emerges with time. There we go. All right, there it is. Feeny, there's my cougar done in ink. How does that look? Can you see it? It's probably yeah. better that way. It's actually um, more more to your. This one, yeah, it just it's getting blown out. Oh, gotcha. But uh, but that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing that live, and um, like I said, get uh, Strathmore toned gray paper. And, um, you know, I've got, what have I got in here? I've got, these are sketches from Wyoming, sitting at the dog park. These are sketches when I was, when I would take our dog to the dog park. And I'll sit and sketch dogs. Um, sitting out in the marsh, sketching grasses. This is from the, uh, the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. All these sketches, drawing mounted animals and hyenas. So get in the habit of you know keeping your sketch, keeping a sketchbook, and uh, and I really recommend this is drawing at the zoo up in Virginia, the Virginia Zoological Park. This guy was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, 
Yeah, just get in the habit of, this is a really detailed one that I did sitting in Colorado, sitting next to a stream. Um, some of them are really quick, little, little sketches of landscapes and things like that. But um, this is when I was in Colombia. There's this lady selling, selling stuff in Colombia, and she was sitting on the, neck, uh, on the street. And, uh, and I just loved, and look at, see the softness I was able to get in the highlights on the blanket? I did that with a pencil, with a, uh, with a Prismacolor pencil. So different, different you, uh, um, tools will give you different results. And so that's how I did that. This is sitting up on the top of a mountain up in Colombia, uh, in Bogota. I was in Bogota, Montserrat. So, but anyway, um, that's a really, it's a really cool uh, way of drawing is uh, you know, using these these utens utensils, you know, the, the brush pen, the white jelly roll pen, and, uh, and then the, the Copic markers. You can get results you know, like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to be signing off, but we uh, uh, will be back next Thursday right here on the same channel on YouTube. And, uh, Facebook on Tuesday. Facebook on Tuesday. And once again, remember, um, today's the last day for that storyboarding course over on, for the pre-sale for the storyboarding course uh, that we have over at CreatureArtTeacher.com, my website. And here, I didn't get a chance to really show you guys, but this is a, this is a mountain lion skull that I bought when I was in, um, when I was in Montana on my last trip to Montana. And uh, pretty cool reference. So... Anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you next week on Thursday. So until then, put some beauty back in the world. We all need to do that. Uh, this is a... We're living in a time where we could really use some beauty and be nice to people and make someone's life better and all that stuff. So um, I try to live by that, and I hope you guys do too. And uh, meanwhile, put some beauty back in the world through drawing. And uh, I will talk to you next week. Bye. Later. And the one time...